in the last video I tore down this charger for DSi and so on, and I said that there was something I was going to use this charger for that wasn't using this charger. Well, what I really want is this connector. Because as I've previously shown, sure we can use this header stuff and it works, but why not just use an actual charger? But instead of using flaky weird circuitry, buy it just for the connector. Especially, you know, if you can find it for a, a dollar, that's worth the connector. If you need to get it elsewhere, you might need to look into the cheapest supply. But I'm sure the connector itself is great. All we have to do is attach this end to a USB cable. Run on down to the dollar store, pick up your usual little USB cable, and we'll just clip the end off of that. I mean, obviously we could make a little female adapter for USB on here and all that, but we just want this to plug right into USB. So we're going to cut this off, cut this, and merge them together. These cables don't feel terrible. I haven't used this specific brand from the dollar store before. Now we've got a pretty good amount of length here. I'm probably thinking I'm going to cut this a little back so this connector remains useful for something if you ever need a little micro B. So I'm going to go about here. A lot of people I've seen actually have the skill to use pliers or wire cutters to strip back the insulation on here. I'm not that skilled. Also not that skilled even with my uh, trusty Exacto. Oh, it's very thin wires in here. I don't know, this might be less trustable than you'd want. That's powdery. These are very thin. I'm a bit let down by God, these are these are awfully thin. It's a bit thinner than I'm used to working with. Can I even strip these? Now that I stripped that one a little bit too low, all we gotta do is figure out polarity. Oh, that might have actually been our the one we want. We have to cut this back a bit more. Once we figure out the colors, it'll help. Uh, it's so thin I'm having no lock twisting this. Alright. Now we just grab the voltmeter, set it to something higher than five, and plug this in. Nope. Five. Five. All right, one of these is data connections, probably. Now have a different supply. This one hopefully doesn't give us five volts on the data connection. Five volts. Right, so it looks like it's gray and pink. Luckily those are the thicker wires it feels. So we don't need this little white stuff. By the way, if you're ever shortening cables like this, try to do so at different lengths. That way when you put things back together, you won't short out what possibly in other connectors could be power. In this case, it's just the data pins. I don't think it'll care if it's shorted. But So now we have these kind of done. All we in theory have to do is check polarity of this. And we're going to trust the cable, not specifically the power supply, in case this is actually wrong, which is not impossible. Because luckily, we know what the end should be and we know which pin should be what, and then we'll be able to tell from there more so than what direction the capacitor cross it is, in case it's wrong. It's possible. For reference... Oh, it actually tells us. So, white... I can't write on that, of course. So we'll just write that black is negative, just for reference, and we can compare later. So let's get out the old soldering setup here. We won't show the overall technique too much. And that's free. Probably strip these back, it looks a bit weak there. The labeling on the supply is in fact correct. Black is negative, white is positive. Coincidentally, the same colors I used in the video with this. So we're going to strip this back a little bit. Give it a liberal coating of solder here. Here's the USB connector. 
We're going to use the good old leave our solder for the connection here. It's pretty bad, but it's done. Always plan ahead if you're going to use hot glue. Make sure it's heating up while you're doing other stuff. That way you don't have to wait. Now, normal people would use electrical tape. That's fine. That's nice. I like it. Some smarter people would have put heat shrink on this, like I should have, but I didn't. Uh, but I prefer, <laughs> since I kind of hit the point of no return unless I undo everything, hot glue. You know, epoxy resin is great, but why not just use hot glue? It's cheaper and easier. So I like to wait until my glue gun is to its point where it's actually quite hot. So we're going to line the top, let it dry, or cool, whichever you prefer to use, and then we're going to flip it over and do the other side. And it's actually going to sag the whole time, so I should probably rotate it as we go, but... We can't twist much, we don't want to make them make contact on the inside, so we have to actually be a little careful here. As you all should know, can of air upside down produces a nice freezing spray, so if you're lazy, you can just gently apply it. And when it turns that off, no longer clear color, we're pretty dry. Deep down, I think I just really like hot glue, and any excuse I can to use it, I jump at the opportunity. Probably avoid getting this stuff on you. After letting things cool, just clean off the nice spiderweb hot glue leaves. Now, if you were not me and you were really smart and thought ahead, what you would actually do is set some heat shrink tubing a little bit larger than you think you're going to make a mess of with hot glue. Set it to the side longer than you want. And then, when you're all done, slide it over and seal it on top of your gluey mess. That would actually look really nice. Uh, and then they would have two perks, is that you never have to really worry about this kind of undoing itself, like electrical tape can sometimes do if you get the cheap stuff or whatever, where it'll undo and then reveal your mask or short it out. But now you're done, you do want to make sure that this isn't shorted. Never fear, because the connector's bag always has little gifts, and one of them is USB. Ooh, it's a nice looking little USB connector. Now we have a test connector. Plug that right on there. Nothing. All right, now this is connected up. I can be able to move this around our joint, which is the place of likely failure. Nothing, not even a blip. So that pretty much means that this is not going to have a problem. In fact, we should plug it in and be able to get almost continuity because of the input stuff. Yeah, there's only one real test. Probably really should have double checked the uh, polarity there. Says it's charging. Here we go. An actually not crappy DS charger. Yep. All right. Well, so it charges still and everything. I think this connector works great. Quick little addendum to the cable here. I did acquire some heat shrink tubing after making it and put it on. So that's kind of what it looks like when you properly conceal the horrible hot glue mess. So you do have this large block in it, but that's not bad considering this cable length is pretty long and so is this one you can have kind of either or do you want a jumbled mess right next to ds do you want this sprung out so for completeness i just got to show that you can in fact buy dsi and 3ds whatever else to usb cables and they're all actually pretty cheap i don't know the quality of any of them but they're all fairly well rated and i would expect them to be fine uh, you can get them from all the usual sources, even with free shipping and everything. So, yes, it's great. If you have the parts, you can make your own. Maybe your charger dies, you know, absolutely dead. You could cut the connector off and make a USB cable since that charger's fried or something, so on. But, you know, you don't have to buy a more expensive charger, cut the end off, and turn it into a USB cable when you can just buy the USB cable. So I just want to be fair and open. I'm trying to give you ideas, help you understand things, and build stuff with the parts that I have and thought would be interesting, and not that this is necessarily the best thing you should do. On that note, 
Thank you for watching. If you did find something in this video useful, give that thumbs up to show me that it was something useful. If not, I think there's still a thumbs down button that, that would show me it's not useful. Subscribe for more. This is Nick signing off. The salute doesn't translate well to, to video when it's showing just the thing.